I'm investigative journalist Molly Barrows. For years, I've covered the stories that made headlines in Northwest Florida and all along the Gulf Coast. Murders. Missing persons. And mysteries of all kinds. These cases are far from over for many victims because the full story has yet to surface. Join me for Gulf Coast Confidential, where I dive into the saltier side of the South and expose the lies, greed, and corruption that often weighs down the truth. It's time to turn the tide and get a shot at justice. Hey y'all, I'm Molly Barrows. Welcome to Gulf Coast Confidential, where we dive into some pretty scandalous cases and crimes that bubble up here in Northwest Florida and well beyond our beautiful Emerald Shores. <laughs> Joining me as always, Pam Hill. She is my co-host here on Gulf Coast Confidential. She is a pharmacist. She is a victim's advocate. She's experienced violent crime in her own family. Always brings a valuable perspective to the stories that we cover. And this is another one that is not a homegrown Gulf Coast Confidential case, but if you follow our podcast, then you know that we cover cases all over the place because so many issues and legal problems and just the motivations that drive people to do these what the feci cases mm -hmm. that we talk about there's a lot of commonalities no matter where they happen so we like to talk about some pretty crazy cases and this is another one that's pretty crazy it's called stink over the ink is a tattoo a sin kevin seamer says so this is such a bizarre case. I think it's known as the tattoo punch murder mm -hmm. or the tattoo punch trial mm -hmm. in some of the headlines. And you brought this to my attention. All started with over a seemingly not so innocent mm -hmm. comment, really. Yeah. Almost a guy picking a right. fight. A comment that people have no business making to each other. I call it, uh, here, hold my beer. Okay, here, there you go. Hold my beer. I will. I hold my Kool-Aid. Uh, I, I, Pours light. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's right. This so, is a big one, too. Is, yeah, I got that from Stella's house. Because <laughs> I don't have any at my house. But uh, anyway, I just call it hold my beer, and I'm like, hold your tongue. You oh, good call, yes. Yeah. The the guy here, we got, we got a cast of characters. We got a cute little man named Josh Davies. He's 39 years old, and he has a wife named Jen. She's a blonde-headed lady, five-foot-one, little small lady. I say that because it means something later. Uh, she's a hairdresser. And then we got Kevin Seamer, who's a bar patron. They're at a place called Tabby's Wine Bar. Not even a not even a throwdown bar, a wine bar up in somewhere. You know, it's sort of like a, a villagey type thing, sort of like Homewood, Alabama is, or maybe uh, some of the places around here. Not necessarily a downtown. This is Waukesha, Wisconsin. Waukesha, yeah. Waukesha. Waukesha. You, you know, we've been there before. Yeah, been the Christmas to Waukesha, parade. Christmas parade and the eye, the Visine eye the drop, eye murder, drop murder. murder. Yeah. Wow. And that's Waukesha, where, Wisconsin. All the time. Hot bed of crime. What y'all doing up there? But anyway, it's a little villagey type place there. So uh, Jen, she brings one of her girlfriends with her. So they're all going out. Josh Davies, who's the little, I call him little cute little man, because he is. He is. I love seeing yeah. his picture, him with his dog. and yeah. He's a landscaper. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give a shout out to the people of Waukesha, Wisconsin. I know it's not a hotbed oh, yeah, of crime, no. but just like the Gulf Coast, mm -hmm. we have some headline making oh, yeah. doozies that oh, yeah. come up. And, yeah. and we got a lot of good people. And I know mm -hmm. they were shocked and saddened by this case. Too. Oh, no doubt. Because yeah, he was so cute and so likable mm -hmm. by all accounts. Yeah, he was a landscaper. Like you said, they called him Big Deal Davies because he's fun. They say he's the fun one. He had been out that day playing disc golf. He wears his little baseball hat backwards. You know, he's got that I little I think that's style. adorable. Yes. I think so. And he has some tattoos on his arms. And they're tattoos that he designed. They don't mean anything. It's not the tear from prison. It's not the cobweb from prison. Right, he's not a gang bear. Yeah, it's not numbers. It's not alphabets. It's not promises. It's not anything. It is it is his ink. I don't have any tattoos, but I think that some people enjoy them. Oh, it's a way absolutely. to express yourself. Yes, yeah. or, or remember someone. Mm -hmm. I've met so many people on so many different stories. I've dated plenty of people that have had tattoos mm -hmm. as well. I think they're fantastic. It's an artistic expression. Mm -hmm. And But like yourself, I don't have one. And mm -hmm. not for lack of thinking anything badly about them. I just have never found anything I liked enough that I wanted on my body permanently. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was like into Jim Morrison when I was in high school. And his saying back in the day was, you know, the lead singer from The Doors for those young people that may be listening. This was an older guy for back in the day, but he died at 27. Anyway, oh. his little saying was, um, I am the lizard king. I can do anything. <laughs> so I thought, I kind of like geckos. Maybe I'll get like a little gecko on my ankle or, you know, somewhere on my tummy. And then mm -hmm. I thought, no, because as I get older, if I gain weight, it'll look like a kimono lizard. <laughs> I just 
<laughs> cannot commit to ink, you know? Well, you, gotta, you gotta be thinking ahead a little bit. I mean, you know, right, it's right. there forever. Right, so I still love Jim Morrison, but I didn't yeah. immortalize him on my body, oh. you know? But <laughs> well, still, good I think it's good that people express themselves that way. Right, right. So we got adorable little Josh going into Tabby's bar. His wife and her friend had already been in there. And her friend, I think her name is Laura, she had been talking to a guy in there just chatting, not anything intimate or anything. It's just, we're in the same place. Hey, how you doing? It was Kevin Seamer. He's a 65-year-old man. Well, Josh comes in a little later, and he comes by his wife and her friend, and Kevin Seamer's there. Well, Kevin Seamer just decides, he's a rando stranger, he just decides, I'm going to tell you this, uh, God doesn't like you messing up his work, tattoos are a sin, and you are going to hell. All oh. that on a first meeting, nobody asks you. Uh, you know, some people get a DUI driving under the influence. He had a TUI. He's talking under the influence. Yes. He needed to be quiet. He needed to hold his tongue. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, you can kind of go to stuff and go, oh, cool. so you want to play Bible right now? In here in tabbies. Well, and just pick and choose what you've decided is a sin. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you're the one in a bar, and mm -hmm. I've been in plenty of bars, so I'm, yeah. you know I'm mm -hmm. living in glass houses and not passing judgment. But I just mean, like, if you're going to sit there and criticize somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, take the plank out of your own eye That's first, exactly sir. right. He uh, needs to read up in Matthew a little bit. Doesn't right, he? <laughs> it's right. Going Don't be removing like splinters when you got planks. <laughs> That's right. So he tells him that, and then Josh, he gets upset a little bit. He's He's got a .24 blood alcohol, Josh does. He's had a buzz. He played a little frisbee golf or whatever you call it. He was having a good day. Yeah, he's he not was bothering chilling. anybody. Yeah. So he's in there. So he goes outside. Well, I guess Kevin Seymour, doesn't, that's not good enough for him because he didn't engage him or anything. So he goes outside and you can tell he's kind of mad. But so Jen and her friend, the lady named Laura, she tries to catch Kevin's shirt tail to like, no, I'll leave him alone. So Josh is outside on the patio, and he's standing around where a lot of stools are. So he kind of picks up a stool, and there's conflict on this or, or conflicting stories on this. But he picks up a stool and keeps it about waist high. Because he thought he was going to have to defend himself. Yeah, defend himself, not from hurt this stranger. Him. Right. So some people said he had the stool over his head. Some people said he had it by his side. Some people said he didn't have one at all. So that's how eyewitnesses are. But what didn't happen, he didn't pick up the stool and throw it at him or hit him with it. So he kind of must have it up because Kevin Seymour says, I go over to him and he says, I pushed him with an open hand and I only hit the stool with an open hand. So he's minimizing what happened. No, he violently shoved this young right, man. Right, right. And that's the word he said. And, or I might have violently pushed him or shoved him. But what everybody else to the person says, he hit him with his right hand into Josh's left temple and it knocked him back and he hit his head on the concrete and he was going in and out of consciousness. Mm. So he caused him to die. Mm-hmm. Definitely. He, he, the the uh, 911 was called and the people came and they were trying, they was in and out of consciousness. So they took him to the hospital and his, it took 27 days. His wife was up there. And during the time she was up there, she was having to write a statement. And so she's, they're not people that have lived this kind of life where they're used to writing police statements. So she's watching him. He had a couple of surgeries, has two skull fractures mm. and some uh, bleeding on his brain. And so they're up there, and her statement's going to be used against her later. The defense attorney in here, he's kind of a scoundrel to me. We'll get to him in a minute. But he's up there. And, you know, Kevin Seymour has had some past bad acts also. Shocking. Yeah, right. But they couldn't be used in his trial. There was a time in, like, 2022, he was at one of the vacuum, like, where you do your car, clean your car. Mm -hmm. He got mad. He just gets mad. He just pops off. He's big and That's just going to be a blowhard and a bigot. and A, a bully. You know, yeah, a bully. So he goes to the to the people that work at the car wash and he's kind of shoves them with the vacuum hose mm. and tells them nothing effing works around here. Then he gets a bunch of towels and throws them on the manager and he just creates a fracas there at, at the car wash. Then going back to 2015, his neighbor had somebody doing the vegetation on the property line. Well, he didn't like that. So he basically comes out there and bullies the man and tells him, I'm fixing to put you in a hole, basically put you in the ground. So he, he's got all those prior bad acts and that's just how he is. So he's doing his thing thinking he's just 
uh, been charged with nothing, just kind of fighting, I reckon. But up in the hospital, Josh's wife is writing down everything she can remember that happened. Well, when we get, Kevin fled that night. He just ran off. He, he didn't stay to see if anything. Uh, Once again, mm -hmm. running his mouth, mm -hmm. shoving people around, causing chaos, but can't take responsibility. Right, right. So here we got some things here. You know, the man's minimizing. I only pushed him. Uh, he's drunk, you know. Josh is drunk. That's what he's saying. Right. Plus, he got tattoos, and he's cute, so I don't like him. Mm. You know, it's jealous. Been, it's That's like, what it smacks yeah. of. So jealous, right? And just bitter and and mm -hmm. bigoted. So. All that's going on. But Josh is in the hospital for 27 days. Wow. And eventually he dies. So the charges got updated. Upgraded, Upgraded. yes. Upgraded. Yeah, I got the wrong word there. Upgraded. And so we go to trial. Well, they were probably updated as well. I mean, <laughs> probably, things have yeah. changed. <laughs> yeah, they have. But I mean, like, you know, this is uh, in Tabby, a wine bar. We don't expect that. And so they went back and looked on the videos. There was a pharmacy across the way. The pharmacy, you could see the video. You could see that Josh wasn't the aggressor. You could see that Kevin was. Right. There's no reason to even be explaining why you had to shove or push somebody violently. You mm -mm. shouldn't have been having an interaction with him at all. Right. Just leave him alone. Right. And he walked away. And then you look on Tabby's videos and you see 10 different cases of him taunting or pushing or teasing with him. I think, you know, some people, when they get drunk, they become belligerent. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Kevin Seymour was drunk. I don't know his blood alcohol level. But lucky for him that, uh, Big Deal Davies, or Josh, he was kind of like, I guess, you know, how some people call a easygoing drunk or a, mm -hmm. a fun drunk or easy to manage drunk or whatever. He wasn't bothering anybody at all. And so uh, all that is going on. It's on videotape. The other patrons saw it. So when we have to go to trial over this, Kevin Seymour, he's minimizing his part in it. Mm -hmm. And basically what had happened, and this is what his lawyer did, his lawyer said, well, when Josh went outside, that stopped that act of him, you know, talking to him, telling him, God doesn't like it. It's a sin. You're going to hell. So he's trying to isolate it. Right. That, that was a separate incident. And then when he comes back outside, right, that, right. that starts anew. Right. And then it's going to turn it around that Josh is the aggressor because he picked up a stool. But the way I think is that thing never stopped. That no, went he right followed on. him outside because right. he didn't get the reaction he wanted. Right. He wasn't going to stop till he got what he wanted. Right. And he was trying to act like that in front of those women because Josh's wife's friend was a pretty lady. And I guess he thought that. And you know, that's what I don't understand. Why do people think that's attractive or sexy or alluring to go bullying everybody else? I don't know. It's living in your own head and yeah. thinking that what you want and what you believe is more important than reality. Yeah. Or, or maybe not even seeing the facts like they really are. Yeah. Just jealous, not being honest with himself about how he really feels. I don't even know. I just thought about that. I mean, I don't go out a lot, but I go out sometime. And when I start seeing people start doing all that, I go home. I don't want any part of any of that. But it's very rare that that happens. I mean, you really got to be an ass to start stuff like that. Somewhere. I know. Well, I will have to say covering news, there have been many instances where people have died or nearly died all from bar brawls or just some sort of altercation that went wrong. Mm -hmm. I have actually covered more than one case where somebody was punched someone else when alcohol was involved and when it wasn't. And then they just hit their head just right, or they hit the ground just right, or they banged it on a curb or somehow hit it on concrete. It is a lot more common than people may think. Mm -hmm. Just these random incidents that start off as maybe normal fisticuffs that become, go down fast, mm -hmm. go downhill fast and yeah. become murder or attempted murder. Or And it sounds like in this situ situation, could have been easily avoidable. Yeah. He, he picked a fight. He continued to follow this guy, wasn't getting the reaction that he wanted until he just had no, didn't sound like that was a reason for at all to hit him. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I, I and I guess the jury agreed since yeah. they convicted him oh, at yeah. trial. I think it said something like less than three hours yeah. they deliberated. Mm, right. So they saw through this bullying behavior mm -hmm. and recognized that Josh Davies did not, was not the aggressor and mm -hmm. did not do anything. Yeah. Well, and it was, it was about half and half men and women on the jury. But I mean, we see plenty of people. They may have their hair dyed. They may have the ear gauges where they stretch their ear or piercings or tattoos or clothes or music or 
suntan. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like suntans, you know, mm-hmm. and color of our skin. Or jewelry yeah. or girls that wear makeup. Mm-hmm. I mean, you name it. Right, exactly. There's a lot of, or, or mm-hmm. women that to wear certain types of clothes. I mean, there are a lot of people with a lot of different preferences, but you don't get to impose that on other people. Mm-hmm. I don't understand where people think that they get to do that. And I thought it took great, whether he was drunk or not, it took uh, uh, great sense to walk outside. Because his wife was still standing there talking to that man. And at one point, he did peek his head back in there and go, are you talking to that? And I probably called him an ass or mm-hmm. something like that. And so she's like, she didn't, she wasn't tuned into it as much as that. She couldn't, I mean, I wouldn't even think that was going on. Because he probably whispered it to him when he went by, you know, just trying to act like that. But what had happened when she wrote her statement in the hospital, she forgot to say that Kevin threw a punch, and she forgot to say that her husband picked up a stool. Well, so the defense attorney said, you know, maybe all this is a lie, since you can't remember to write down the most important thing if you say he hit him or that he fell back or whatever. So he's basically just kind of not giving her too much hell but enough. And I thought to myself while I was watching it, and then eventually I thought to myself, most of us don't live like that. Most of us aren't defense attorneys. Most of us don't hear these stories and think that we need to document this. And she told him real politely, it was real sweet. She said, basically, I've never written one of these before. I've never sat at my husband's bedside with a brain bleed and and two skull fractures where he got punched in the temple, a deadly punch in the temple Mm. and banged his head. I've never done that before. But she still stayed nice and polite and demure and stuff, which, you know, stuff like that makes me mad because I get mad when people try to say stuff like that and try to make people uh, act like they have to apologize and stuff. But she hung tough. And so they asked her, they said, "Uh, do you you weigh less than 270 pounds? And she said, yeah, I do. You know, like that, because they were saying he was such a bully that everybody was just kind of uh, backing up from him. Yeah. And they're talking about um, Kevin Seamer being a bully. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 offender. The offender. Mm-hmm. Golly. It is interesting, though. It, you know, it, it did remind me, like I said, of several stories that I've covered. I know of a, of a person actually who got uh, somebody who was extremely belligerent, punched him in the jaw. He never saw it coming, and it broke his jaw. Mm. It, he had to have it wired shut for months um, and and did nothing to, to you know, s- irritate this person mm-hmm. or antagonize yeah. him, I should say. It was just somebody who was drunk and looking for a fight. And I think there are people like that. And when you mix in alcohol and probably other substances, then it becomes a situation that can go south pretty quickly. But I know, and I, we talked a little bit about this story earlier we were talking about covering this case. Um, but I remember when I was, you know, married to my husband, we went to a little bar right around the corner from our house one time, killing time, I think. We had to go you know, for, for whatever reason, and it wasn't a place that we normally went. And we sat at the bar, and this couple came in, and I didn't realize that uh, my now ex-husband had represented him. He does family <laughs> law attorney, and he had represented this man's wife in their divorce, And so this man was not happy to see my ex-husband. I didn't realize there was this history between them, but this man had a woman with him, and they apparently were just recently dating. Um, And so they sat down next to us. They're making conversation with both of us. And I didn't know the background, but I could see Craig, my ex-husband, was being polite but hesitant about engaging with Mm -hmm. them because he probably saw what was coming. And uh, at any rate, I'm just making conversation. And and they were like, oh, yeah, well, y'all come here very often. And they were like, yeah, we come here. I was asking this of her. And she's like, yeah, we come here pretty regularly. We live just right around the corner. And I was like, oh, well, that's nice. That's within stumbling distance Mm -hmm. and (laughs) just making a joke. And she's like, she's like, what are you trying to say, you bitch? You know, she was (laughs) like, you say that I'm a drunk. And I was like, whoa, hey, let's get the brakes (laughs) on. Back it up, girl. I really wasn't even trying to have a conversation with y'all. But now it's getting ugly. And I said, well, you know, I apologize. I certainly wasn't trying to be offensive. But then there was no accepting my apology. And then they were both looking to build on this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, pretty quickly, Craig was like, can we have the bill? We're just going to yeah. go and leave. And, uh, you know, it felt very uncomfortable. It was it was ugly all the way around because you just, you're just trying to you're in a bar full of strangers, really. Mm-hmm. You know, and in this case, maybe this was a place that Josh Davies went fairly regularly Maybe he knew other people there or not, but we did not. And we didn't want to stick around because we didn't want to be antagonized and we weren't looking for trouble. Mm-hmm. And so I applaud Josh for leaving. Mm-hmm. We left as well. And things, obviously, nobody followed us out to the parking lot. So that worked right. out good. And I never went back to that place. And uh, But I will say fast forward many years later, um, Craig and I split up. That man reached out to me 
on social media and private messaged me and basically still blames Craig for his divorce, thinks that Craig is the one that's responsible for all these terrible things that have happened in his life, and asked me if I wanted to get back at my ex-husband by sleeping with him. Wow. He's kind of Harvard bound. Well, isn't I was he? like, that's so <laughs> disturbing on so many levels. I was like, first of all, gross. Yuck. No. Second of all, gross. Third of all, gross. <laughs> right. Like, in what world is this like, oh, yay. Hey, let's just <laughs> team up. And like, if I wanted to do that, it wouldn't be with you. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I don't want to do that anyway. Right. That's just ugly, ugly, ugly all the way around. But it goes to show you that people, like we were talking about, they live in their own head. They, they do. build this Mo- this reality in their own heads that, you know what, this is a really good idea. Yeah. I'm going to reach out to this lady and she's going to want to go along with this. Right, and I'm right. like, who is benefiting <laughs> from this plan? <laughs> Not this girl, no. you know? And certainly whatever this man was thinking, you know, Kevin... <laughs> I, I just can't imagine that he walked in, you know, thinking this is this guy has a tattoo. Mm-hmm. This is a sin. I have I'm entitled to just go mess with him and torment him and ultimately take his life uh, all was, because he was in a bad mood. Well, I think I think it was sort of like what you were talking about there. I think he saw that Jen had a pretty friend and she wasn't married or didn't indicate that she was married. And I think he thought he had a chance with her. And this yeah. is where women have to be careful, too, though, you know know, because she was kind of teasing back at him because he had a little vodka drink with cranberry in it, kind of looked pink. And she said, I made a joke to him that was a girly drink. Well, some people you can't tease with, obviously, you know, because they take it off in their head and go, OK, right. now we're married. Pretty women probably never speak to that. <laughs> right. Day. We're at the Sandals Resort now because I have a pink drink, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When is the cruise? That's right. right. <laughs> Anniversary. Whatever. You know. But there's some people like that. You have to be careful. And it's like we were talking about earlier, too. I've been places before that I sometimes sit at the bar to eat because if I'm by myself and it every now and then there'll be some man that'll come up and want to just sit right here in my space and mm. I can buy your dinner. I'm like, well, that's that's a coincidence. So can I, you know, and I just really, if I wanted to be with you, I would come with you. Right. And I'm not talking to you. Because I'm sitting here doesn't mean I can't wait for somebody to take the seat next to me right. and fill my ear with their words. Yeah, or either, I don't even really, here's, here's about me. I don't care. Go on. <laughs> nah, <know>? sir. Nah. <laughs> Go find somebody else over there that's interested. I'm not. I'm talking to somebody else anyway. But my point is, I'm not that disagreeable of a person, but you don't just get to come in and take up people's day that's right. and their event and turn it. Look what read he did. Read the room. That, read the room for real. He was playing Frisbee golf. He, on double date night with his wife and somebody else there, I, I don't think Kevin Seymour was supposed to be in it, but somehow I guess he was. Right. But and then he ends up knocked out in 27 days year 27 days later if he don't like tattoos i got news for him where he's going he is going to see tattoos everywhere because i think basically i looked this up to see how many people have tattoos cuz quite a few people do and they said about 22% of americans have over 2 tattoos hmm. and then they had a like 27% of men and it said 38 of women, but I think that's high. That might be uh, a little higher. It might not be. Some people's tattoos are hidden, but it, you know, they're not, it, like I said, it's not a gang tattoo. It's not that kind of stuff. He's fixing to go to tattoo a palooza because he go going to prison. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Where people that teardrop can mean a whole lot of different things. And Roy's it's not, property. Right, exactly. <laughs> Bubba's property. Bubba's property. You know, or Leroy right. or somebody, but it ain't him. But so he's uh, going to see the tears. He's going to see the numbers. He's going to see, uh, mm-hmm. because I looked up one time, what does the cobweb mean? On people's elbow. Oh, yeah. And it meant that they're there for a long time. Oh. You know, so that, that's what they say, you know. So I, I ain't an expert on tattoos or anything, but I'm pretty sure Kevin Seymour, after he gets 21 years, he'll be sentenced in September 6th. After he gets 21 years, he can be have his Ph.D. in tattooology. That's right. And he can then start preaching on the sins of tattoos. <laughs> yeah. and- be the, the moral compass on all of that. <laughs> right. And even if you do think that, you don't have to express every yeah. thought you have in your head. Nobody asked him. <laughs> no, right. Nobody asked you. And sometimes that's a good answer. Aww. But I was thinking about all this kind of stuff. I was thinking about the case that we did just last week about the uh, 
deputy sheriff that just came in the lady's house, didn't like that she was boiling water. Sean Grace. Yeah, he got in his head, got something in his head. And then uh, we've got the uh, Pow Pow Popcorn. We did that case where Curtis Reeves didn't like that the man sitting in front of him was texting on his phone to the babysitter. Before the movie even started Mm -hmm. in a Tampa movie theater, retired Mm -hmm. police officer decided he was going to take his gun into the theater and use it on a man who was texting his child's babysitter. Right, because the man turned around and like kind of tossed his popcorn at him like, hey, buddy, I don't have to ask you. You know, this man in the movie theater had a little more pushback than Josh had. And I think most any person. It doesn't have to be a man, but especially a man. You're not going to tell another man sitting, you're sitting behind them, tell another man, hey, get off your phone like he's five years old. Right. You know, if he wants to be on his phone the whole movies, it would be rude, crude, and socially unacceptable, but he can do it. Well, that's the same with the Apple River incident. Mm -hmm. The man that was looking for the lost cell phone, looking around where all those kids were on their tube, and then those kids up and decided that he was just some pervert looking at kids, Mm -hmm. and they got themselves all geeked up, and to the point where the man felt like he had to defend himself, but he wasn't convicted of that. He was convicted of, a, you know, a crime, basically, mm-hmm. for stabbing these kids. Right. He was not found not guilty, right. you know, for defending himself. Right. So at any rate, I think those are several situations that are similar in that, you know, people try to walk away. These All of these incidents could have been avoided, I think, if people had just shown some self-restraint. Mm-hmm. Or just walk away. And, and sometimes when we're out with other people, we don't know what's going on mm-hmm. it, it, between other people. Or what they're on. There's yeah. so many chemicals. I just don't think we mm-hmm. can underestimate the level to which people are getting, taking substances that might affect their behavior. Mm-hmm. Right, know. right. And they said that uh, Josh didn't have an obligation to retreat mm-hmm. or run or whatever like that. And I don't think he did retreat or run, but I think he used very good sense to remove himself. Right, even from though it him. wasn't enough. My heart definitely goes out to him and his family. I know, I know. It was just, it's just so unnecessary. His little buddies all got together. His mama on her victim impact statement said, Josh was a lover, not a fighter. He always was. He never would choose fighting. And to the person on all the interviews that I saw, they were like, he was the light. He was the fun one. It didn't start till he got there. And so I, I saw that little picture like with his baseball hat on backwards and, you know, my dad's older, you know, because I'm older. But my dad, he didn't like it when men wore their hat backwards like that. I know. I guess it is a little childish, (laughs) but but it does seem like they'd be fun. Right. But my dad's like, oh, what the hell? Just wearing a hat, who cares? You know, because my dad was like a lover, too. (laughs) It's probably part of the problem. (laughs) But, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Too much of a lover. So, I mean, you know, just it's, it's different ages, too. But you don't get to tell people that they can't wear their hat like that and that they cannot have tattoos. Well, we'll see what Mr. Ke- uh, Kevin Seamer gets sentenced to come September 6th. Mm-hmm. Well, Pam, thank you so much for joining us, and we appreciate you joining us today. That is it for Stink Over the Ink. Is a tattoo a sin? Kevin Seamer says so. We appreciate you joining us. I'm your host, writer, and producer, Molly Barrows, with co-host and researcher, Pam Hill. And a big thanks, as always, to our director, editor, and production engineer, James Roy. Remember, you can listen to more of our Gulf Coast Confidential Conversations wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And you can also watch on the Gulf Coast Confidential YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe.